we like for all our installers and customers to use exactly what we recommend is continuity. Continuity of all our systems installed across the United States being very similar if not the same, as close as possible that we can configure them, ensures that when you call me on the phone, uh, you know, I can troubleshoot your system much quicker. I know exactly what we're talking about. I can see it in my mind because you did that system the way that Wind Energy 7 recommends. So there's a lot of options on what you can do with a system, and um, a lot of people may freelance out there, but uh, as a dealer or a customer for Wind Energy 7, I can support you better if you just do as we recommend. Okay, let's talk about some of the tools that are required to, to do battery banks. Um, now, if it's your first installation or your, your home installation, or you're not really going to be an installer dealer, you're just going to just trying to get a system in. Uh, battery cables are something that you can source from the local um, auto parts store. Uh, battery cables will come in uh, 12, 24, and 36 inch lengths. Uh, and uh, most of them are around uh, two to four gauge, sometimes six gauge. Two gauge is ideal, two gauge is what I like. Uh, again, with all, all, all items in, in uh, green energy products, uh, in, uh, renewable energy systems, all your wiring, the bigger the better. So, same with battery cables. Uh, I've seen battery banks with cables, you know, bigger than my thumb. Gigantic uh, overkill uh, in a battery cable. Uh, bigger is better, that may be a little extreme, but the less resistance, the less power you're going to lose the, uh, in the transmission. So the more efficiency. Uh, the smaller your cabling, the more friction, the more resistance you're going to get, the more heat, thus you're losing power. So the bigger the better. Two gauges is what I recommend. Um, and uh, anyway, so you can get those from a local uh, auto parts store and that's fine. Uh, if you're going to be a dealer though, I recommend you make your own cables. I make my own cables because I can make a better cable than anything I can buy. So I recommend you do the same if you're going to be a professional installer uh, or a Wind Energy 7 dealer. Uh, I recommend you make your own cables and uh, ultimately it'll save you a few bucks, uh, but uh, really it's a matter of having an ideal battery cable that's better than anything you can buy. Um, so let me talk about how I make battery cables and some of the things that I need, some of the tools that you'll use if, if uh, you want to make your own battery cables and how that process goes. Um, one of the tools that I use is, uh, and not just for battery cables, but in, ge in general in wiring, uh, if you're going to cut something as big as a battery cable, you need a big cutter like this, okay? They make a nut, one smaller that's about 12 inches long. You can get this at any, uh, you know, hardware or electrical supply, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, and you can see, uh, you know, what that is. That's about a 65 or $70 tool, okay? Let me show you what it can do. You can imagine how hard it'd be to cut a cable that thick. That's a two-gauge cable. That around that, boom. That's why that's good. Um, so there's a shorter one that's a little cheaper you can get that'd be fine. Looks exactly the same. Looks exactly the same. You want to get that. It's a must have tool if you're going to be a pro. Um, the other thing you got to do with battery cables besides cut them and measure them is you got to terminate them. So to terminate them, it takes lugs. Uh, these are lugs. Hopefully the video will focus to that. That's a lug. You can see it's got a hole where you stick the battery cable down into there, and then you crimp it. You, you, you crimp this right here so that it squeezes it, and that will no longer come loose from the cable. You stick the cable in, crimp it. Two ways to crimp it. Okay. One would be a vise. Uh, a vise is probably, probably actually the second best way to do it, but it works great. You put your cable end in there, you stick it in the vise, you crank it down, and, and you just you just squeeze it till it won't go anymore. More, and then your uh, you know your cable is crimped and won't be coming loose, and you've done a good job. Uh, this is another good tool that I like to have. Uh, this is a battery cable crimper, or you know I guess you could use it on something besides battery cables. Uh, but anyway. 
uh, you can see this little guy uh, has a sort of a bullet plunger in there. It has a little thumb trigger to open that thing and it's spring loaded. Now you take that, put your cable in your lug, and you put that right in there and you let that close down on it like that. So that works. And then, you know, on steel or concrete surface, you hit that with a really big hammer and, uh, and it crimps it sort of in a V-shape because of the way it's got this plunger. It kind of crimps it in, in, a, in the shape of a V. And it gives you a little bit more contact than if you just crimped it flat, like with a vise. That's why I prefer this. It's going to give you a, you know, a U-shape or a V in there. And it's going to get you more contacts with your cabling than it would if you did it with a vise. Either way is fine. This is about a $45 tool. Uh, you can find that at Granger.com if you search for a battery cable crimper or battery cable crimp tool, maybe crimp tool. Anyway, that's what that looks like. Got to have that. Um, this is also a much more portable tool. You, you know, it's a lot easier to carry around than a vice. 